what's interesting, watch what, oh. Yeah, I can't put it in drive or reverse or anything like that. But when the 12 volt battery starts going bad, it, all hell breaks loose on the car. Okay, so the introduction may have been a little dramatic, but it does illustrate how quickly things can go from good to bad in an instant. I was just getting into my car as usual, only to discover I couldn't put it into reverse or drive, and the screen was blank. Now, once this all happened, I decided to pull up my phone and document what was happening. So upon getting in my car, I did my typical, went into reverse, and I noticed nothing was happening. Now, what's interesting, watch what, oh. So this is the first time I'm getting anything from the screen. And let's see what pops up. Uh, but when I initially, oh, all right. Let's see here, electrical system power reduced, non-essential features, service is required. So let's see here, parking brake functions degraded, uh, parking brake functions, parking brake, 12 volt battery must be replaced soon. So this is what I think everyone's been dreading, right? Is the battery needing to be replaced. So there are going to be a few options that I'm gonna check into because I'm obviously gonna need a new battery soon. So I'm gonna contact customer support, customer service, and see what their options are. When I open the wind, when I open the door, it actually goes down halfway instead of the just that little bit. And see, it just keeps going down a little bit at a time. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but it seems as though when the 12 volt battery starts going bad, it, all hell breaks loose on the car. So it's kind of interesting. So oh, there, it finally just lost all its power. So my next step is going to be to check the voltage coming out of the battery and then obviously checking into getting a new battery see what happens I remember when I was talking about how the window goes all the way down in little increments when I, when I close the door it goes back up but just that little bit so many of you may know that I have the automatic opening and closing frunk so you may be curious if it's working properly with a well it's not really a dead battery at this point we'll see but I'm gonna go ahead and open the frunk and you'll see that it actually works as usual. So there is power coming out of the battery, but uh, we got to get to the battery to see uh, if we have the proper voltage coming out. Go ahead and take this service panel off here. And the battery, there's the negative terminal here and the positive is underneath here. So I'm going to take my multimeter here and I make sure that the black uh, cable is plugged into this bottom one here. I'm not an electrician, so I don't know the terminology of all this, but this is the proper placing of where the cables go. Then I turn it on and I put it to DCV right here in the multimeter, and I've got it set to 20. Okay, that's where I've got it set. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this here, see if you can see it still. And it is indeed low, it's at 9.5. 19, 9.20. Um, it should be somewhere between 12 and 13. It's actually dropped a bit now. So it's it's obviously low. It's not holding a charge very well. So, oh, interesting. It's back up to 12.3. After seeing the spike in voltage, I decided to go back into the car to see if I could get the car in drive or reverse, but still no luck. I was continuing to get all of the alerts and what I discovered later after looking at the video is the map is only displaying my city and state, but not my actual address. Now this could possibly be part of the low power mode of the car, but don't quote me on that. Now I decided to give it one more shot about an hour later. Okay, I'm gonna try this again and uh, see how it goes. Close the door and the window is working as usual again. I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the brake. I'm looking at the clock. You can see everything kind of comes in. So I started at 10 seconds of this video recording and I am gonna go ahead and um, keep my foot on the pedal, on the brake pedal uh, for 30 seconds. And we'll see if the car will, oh, look at that. 
Yeah. Everything kind of just took off here and the brake reacted as well. Let's see what happens. There, there we go. See how it's going back down half, almost like say a third of the way. It's gonna go down another increment. If you listen closely, do you hear that? Some kind of humming of some sort. That doesn't sound good actually. Now I'm trying to just put the, the window all the way up if I can. If you listen closely, you can hear the humming. So that is what I'm dealing with right now. Oh. Now the screen is coming back up, all these different beeps and warnings. And so now there seems to be enough power, unable to charge, services required, electrical system power reduced, power braking assisted reduced. Let's see if the window works normally. Nope, same thing. Yep, it can't go up. Ooh, it's trying, it's trying. There we go. All right, so next step, contact customer service. Second step, I'm going to see if I can order a battery, and then we'll kind of go from there. But kind of at this point, if I can get the car going, I don't think I'm going to want to take it out anywhere because I don't want to get stranded anywhere. So uh, wish me luck. See, hopefully it doesn't take too long. At this point, I started looking at all of my options, and the first place I looked was Tesla customer service. I was able to exchange a few texts with the service technician and the earliest he could get mobile service out to me was on Wednesday. This all happened on a Thursday the week before. That wasn't soon enough so I looked into the Omu lithium battery and was able to get it shipped out overnight. But the price had me thinking twice about it, especially since Tesla was only going to charge me $122 for parts and labor once the mobile service arrived and I later discovered the battery alone was $85. Now keep in mind, prices may vary depending on where you are, but this is a good ballpark figure. Now I plan on doing a separate video in this series explaining the options available, and we'll let you know in that video which option I went with. But once I did order my 12 volt battery, I checked the status of my car the next day. The 12 volt battery, is still showing that it's uh, low and needs to be replaced soon. But in a pinch, if I had to, I could very easily drive this car and I could get to where I needed to go, but I would have in the back of my mind an issue as to whether or not the car is going to start. Because I think about what happened yesterday and how I wasn't able to get in there. But it's restored to normal. Everything seems to be okay. What I'm going to do is get into the garage and I am going to go ahead and see if I can't uh, see what kind of voltage is putting out. All right, so, I mean, I've got a fully charged 12 volt battery. So is it safe for me to go out and, and drive the car? I don't know. Uh, it certainly is gonna be a risk. 14.1 uh, is what I'm looking at. Yesterday, uh, it was somewhere around eight to nine. So somehow overnight, it seems to have recharged. Um, I don't know, maybe I can risk it, we'll see. Now in the end, I did need to drive the car over the weekend before the battery arrived, and it performed as usual. Now I did have one instance though, where the car went into low power mode. But once I got out of the car and re-entered, the car was back to normal. Now when the battery arrived on Monday, I was able to get it installed in less than 30 minutes. Now on that note, I will also have a step-by-step -step video on how to properly install a new 12 volt battery. In the meantime, be on the lookout for my next video in this series when I discuss with you the different 12 volt battery options and which one I decided to go with. Well, thank you all so much for watching and you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and stay positively charged.